Hi everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at creating uh, this kind of cool text outline and we're going to be using obviously type and we're going to be using mash trails and the mash curve node here. So uh, let's get started. I'll just um, create a new scene here and then obviously the first thing we want to do is to create some type. Now, the text that we want is outline and the font that I want is kilogram. So there you go, here's our, here's our text. And I'm going to turn off extrusion because I want flat text. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and edit the material on this. So if I make this very, very dark, but I make this um, kind of kind of shiny, something like that. We get this uh, subtle, subtle looking um, uh, font. Right, so I need to uh, create curves from the type. And when I create the curves from the type, what happens is I get a new group in the outliner. And this group here has, if I solo these items, um, and I change the background color, or B to change the background color, you can see here are our curves been created from a type, pretty cool, right? So um, what I need to do is I want to animate some mash points going around these curves and then I'm going to emit trails from those points. So um, I'm going to create a sphere. I'm not going to use um, the polysphere here just because it's very high resolution. So I'm going to create a platonic solid and I'm just going to go and smooth that uh, once like so and then I'll just delete history on that. So there you go. Uh, so with this um, sphere here, I'm going to create a mesh network. I'll go mesh, create mesh network. And then I can, I think, let's try this, select all of these curves, um, select uh, the mesh network and go and add a curve node. And with all of those curves that I had selected get added to the mash network. This is the best way to do it. And the reason is because you can't, currently because of a bug in extension 2, you can't drag and drop more than one item at once onto the um, curve node. So the best way to do this is just to have them all selected when you add, it f um, add the node for the first time. So, um, I where's my mash network? Uh, oh, I've got, I've got solo selection, haven't I? So, so <clears throat> on the mash network... Um, I just need to turn off the default uh, linear distribution and when I just play this back see that our objects are automatically animating down the curve. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I've got eight curves so I only need eight objects and you'll notice that um, our U has two objects on it and our the inside of our O has no object on it and that's because by default the curve node in MASH has this uh, proportional counts checkbox turned on. And what that means is that it will uh, give longer curves more points than shorter curves. Um, this is just to keep kind of even spacing. Um, so what we can do is we can turn on proportional counts and that will give each curve one object. So now we press play, they're all doing that. Okay, so that's cool. So we can control our animation speed using the animation speed slider. So they go around more quickly if we do that. Step does nothing in this instance because we only have one point per curve. So I'm just going to turn this back down to 0 0.5. Um, so here are objects going around our curve. And the next thing I'm going to do is let's just add a trails node. So I'm going to add trails and um, let's leave the length at 25. And what I'll do is I'll create a, um, I'm going to create a circle and then I'm going to drag the circle onto the trails node like so. And then let's just press play and see what we've got. So um, you can see here that there's an awful lot of weird kind of kinking and squashing going on in our um, in our trails. So you see that the geometry is kind of folding in itself and all that kind of thing. Well, that's because um, we have uh, to change our root vector. So our root vector is um, x here. So let's change that to b z like so. And then our um, trails were squashed. So I, I'm going to just scale down uh, the size of the trails to make them a thinner. And then what we can do is we can add a material to them. Let's add, what should we add? Should we have a flat color? Let's have a flat color. Um, I'm going to uh, make this something like that. And then I can do the same to the to these spheres, the repro mesh on the um, uh, mesh network. Let's just assign the same shader to them. And then we're already getting there. 
So, um, something that's worth pointing out is that uh, the um, trail on this small circle on the O is going around, um, is making, um, get going around its curve much more quickly than the um, large O, and that's because obviously the smaller O is much smaller, so the um, the mash point is going around, traveling around more quickly. You can actually change this by uh, um, changing the setting on the curve node here, and that is curve length affects speed. So if we just rewind and hit play here, that means that the slower the curve, the, um, the sorry, the shorter the curve, the slower the object will move, so that orbits along all the curves, or kind of like com uh, complete journeys around the, c uh, the curve, uh, will take exactly the same number of frames for each item. So that done, let's turn our animation speed up to something like one or whatever, and then play. Uh, let's go even faster than that, two. And yeah, you can see that we've got our um, our trails going around our text. So um, as you may have noticed, uh, might you might have noticed if I just zoom in here, you'll see that our curves are actually our trails are cutting off corners here. And if we have a speed of say 0.5, I rewind and press play, we get a much better representation of the geometry, or we get a better representation of the geometry. Of course, you can always smooth these if you want to to make them look nicer. Um, and the reason for that is that the trails are created one per frame. So one new piece of trails geometry is created per frame. So the slower that your objects go, the more accurately they will represent the outline of the shape. Um, so what if you want to have an accurate outline, but you want the objects to move, say, at the speed of whatever, say, let's, let's say this. You want the objects to move this fast, but you want them to have an accurate outline. Well, the solution to that is pretty simple. What you do is have a, say, speed of whatever, a speed that gives you an accurate outline of your shape, say 0.5 in our case here, and you get a trail length that you like for this speed, to match the speed, so let's say 50 frames for us, let's try that. Um, if you get this bug, by the way, that when you change your trail length, your um, curve goes um, wonky. This is a bug caused by an optimization that we have on the um, trails uh, curve attribute here. What you need to do is just give this um, uh, give this graph a little wiggle and everything will sort itself out. So anyway, so now we have kind of like a, a length and um, a, um, a speed that's giving you a decent resolution. All you need to do is grab your um, geometry that you want and then what we're going to do is we're just going to create an Alembic cache. So you just go export all to Alembic. Now what you might want if you're texturing things and things like that um, is you might want to have UV right turned on so that your UVs go out. So you do an export all, I've already done this, and then I'm going to do an import Alembic, and the import I've got is this outline here. Now I don't know if, I don't think that the outline that I had imported um, it's actually for a different scene, uh, so <laughs> um, uh, that's embarrassing. I um, uh, if I just play this back, yes, that's for a different scene. Whoops. Um, I must have done capital ah, capital letters, must I? So let's just go back onto the type mesh here. <laughs> let's see if I if I do yes. There you go. Okay, so it was capital letters. Okay. Whoops. So um, yeah, so we've got our, our kind of our, our trails going around the object. I'm just going to grab the trails and I'm going to assign the texture to them like so. I can hide these original curves. I don't need them. So here are our outlines. I'm going to go to a black background and yeah, there you go. So what you can do is if you're playing this back and you think, well, this is slow, but you've got your good resolution because this is an Alembic file. You can go to the Alembic node and you can just change the speed. So you can change the speed to something like three and then you have your accuracy, but the file is playing much more quickly. So there you go. Ta -da. I think you can go to four on this. So that is how you go about that. And that's the long and the short of it. So slightly over, um, so slightly over explained that because it's actually really quite simple. But um, there you go. So if you wanted this to loop, that's one more thing to say. Uh, if you wanted this to loop, you just need to find a frame. Say let's find a frame. Let's say call this one our start frame. We'll say fifty one. Um, and then you need to do is you need to go ahead in the animation and find basically the frame before this one. So if we just nip forwards, and then say. It's this frame here, and we just go to 100 and call out the end of our animation. This now loops. 
So yes, there you go. Here's our looping outline animation trails curve node. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, so nice and simple. And like I say, completely over explained. Anyway, I hope you've taken something from that.